Yes. In what you looked at through the uh, <clears throat> with regards to this district, did you come up with or see what you think the biggest opportunity is that you would attack or want to deal with if you were um, hired for that job? A while, back, a while ago that I was applying for, I was asked a question similar to that. And I would offered a very aggressive answer. And it turns out that although I was hired, I was advised that it really wasn't welcome that a complete outsider would come in and tell the district or the school how to do business. So with that said, I'm going to make a suggestion and not a directive. How's that? Because I'm currently not under payroll. <laughs> I think there are there are two things in particular that jumped out at me as I did my online research and as I looked around. Uh, one is based on who I am and the things I believe. If you have not read Jim Collins' Good to Great, I recommend it highly. It's uh, I told a group earlier today. I think that's the most inspiring professional book I've ever read, and I don't know why I connected with it. People would read it and say, "Okay, it's good, but the most inspiring, really." But I really feel that way. I feel that it, it really gets at the core of leadership and more than anything, it, it organizational change, organizational improvement. I see the prospect that this particular district is probably what Collins would describe as a good district, uh, certainly uh, performing well in many, many ways. I would want to go on some type of exploration with staff and community here to determine what it would take for us to truly be able to identify ourselves as a great district. What would be the components of being a great district? What data points would suggest that? What other indicators there would be? Share that information together and then plot a course for how we get from where we are right now to where we want to be. So that's one. The other one is it's a nationwide problem, problem and, I, and um, I think I have some answers because of, we've just commissioned a study but high school mathematics, I think, is always something that until we get up to at least the 90% achievement level, there's going to, we have to treat it as, as a problem we have to, to fix. Uh, we have, and it might be because students are arriving at high school without the necessary skills. It might be because we have societal phobias about mathematics. There could be any number of reasons. Um, we just commissioned a study in Clover Park with a, an outside advisor who came in and has just finished giving us a report as to what she's found. I think there are elements of what she's seen that are transferable to just about any district in this, in this country. And I think one of them is that we have to make sure that we're, we're teaching the material as well and as thoroughly as we possibly can, that our goal is to do a few things well rather than a lot of things poorly, and that we, we teach it in such a way that we can then measure it and make a determination at the end of a particular unit or section of learning where we can determine if students have actually got it or not. We have tended to defer or to maybe to default to the end of the year test from the state to tell us things that it just isn't designed to tell us, such as how a student is doing all the way along. So um, that's, I mean, the report is a wonderful document by, by a math expert, and I think that it's something that will will definitely go with me where I go next. I'm swiping all kinds of stuff from the work that I've done over the years because I think it's viable stuff. <laughs> <laughs>